Hi, today I'm going to talk about how you should think about the strain control mode that you use in the experiment when you analyze experimental data for material model calibration. And this may seem like an obvious thing, but it really there is more to it, and you should really think about this carefully in order to get the most accurate material model. Specifically, I'll focus on how you get compression only in a compression experiment or tension only in a tension experiment. And this is something you can do very quickly in M calibration once you know what to look for. So let's just talk talking about a uniaxial compression experiment. So I have a specimen, it sits like that in a test uh, machine and it's undeformed. And then I start to deform it, I move the cross head from the top downwards, the specimen expands and there's some fo force required to do that. And then assume that I'm starting to unload it. At some point, the, the specimen will not be in contact with the loading platens again if the material has undergone some plastic deformation or a residual deformation. And this is really important. Um, so if we plot strain versus time, we compress it and then we compress it and we go back to zero. We don't here get any tensile stress. So traditionally in a uniaxial compression experiment, you cannot get tension. So the stress constantly is going to be negative. So that's really important to, to keep in mind as you analyze experimental data. So here's some data for polycarbonate uniacid compression followed by unloading. And I have calibrated the polyumod T and V mod to this. And here's my load case. So if I simply just run this once, you will see in blue here is the predicted stress strain curve. It looks pretty good. It can be improved further if by calibrating it more. But the point here is that you can see that the blue dashed curve, the prediction, is not constrained to only be negative. Remember, a compression test has negative strain and negative stress. But the prediction here actually goes positive. That's because M calibration, the default setting is to basically take this finite element internally and compress it following the strain history and it's allowed to go positive in stress. And that's really not what happens in this experiment. So to overcome this, we can do a few things. So if we, what we can do is we can, for example, let me um, remove that prediction here. I can, uh, traditionally what you do is you set strain control here under the load case, but you can also have another setting that's called strain control compression. So if you pick strain control compression, and then I'm going to run these two load cases here, we'll see that the red one is what we had before, which is traditionally how you set it up. But if you do strain control compression, then M calibration will not create a tensile stress state. It basically simulates a case where you compress it and you unload it. And if the stress were to go a tensile and um, calibration switches to load control internally and makes sure that the stress is zero there. So we'll get some recovery here depending on the material, but the stress will stay at zero or negative uh, under these conditions. And that can obviously be better for your uh, predictions and uh, better for the calibration in some cases because that's not realistic to have a tensile stress there. So that's how you can deal with that. The, whether or not you turn on the strain control compression or if you just use strain control, it's really up to you. It depends on the data and what you're trying to do. And similarly, this can be an issue in tension. So here is a, a M calibration window with, M with a tensile stress followed by unloading. I calibrated here a polyumod three network model to this data. If I simply just run this load case, we'll see that in this case, in tension, we get the stress that goes uh, positive, and then during unloading, we get negative. And that can happen in real life with certain specimens. If your specimen is relatively thick, and then you start unloading it, 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 it may buckle, but maybe not. So you can certainly have a compressive stress state in a specimen like that. But if you have a really thin specimen, a specimen that clearly doesn't have any force in buckling, then you don't want to have a load case where you have a significantly compressive stress. And you can avoid that problem with the compressive stress by simply saying strain control tension. And if you do that, then the stress will be constricted to only be positive corresponding to a specimen that doesn't have stiffness in compression. And we can analyze this by simply running a case like that. So here is the, the red one is the strain control normal. 
and the blue one would be strain control compression. And we see a little bit of, of recovery here. That's what's given by the particular material model that's uh, defined in this case. And that's something you can calibrate, obviously. So that's really how you can think about these things. So to summarize, in some cyclic compression experiments, it's better to use strain control compression. And uh, sometimes you just use regular strain control. If you have tensile specimens that are really thin and don't have any force in compression, I would typically use strain control tension in that case. But otherwise, you can just use the traditional strain control. So those are things for you to think about as you set up your calibration. And if you have any questions on this, you can ask them below.